Welcome to Daddy Issues, Conversations with Dads, a podcast from Fathers and Family Center of Indianapolis, Indiana. Hey, welcome in, everyone. Happy 2024. My name is Jason Aquisto, and with me, as always, is the president and CEO of Fathers and Family Center, Larry Smith. Larry, how's it going? They're going well, back, refreshed, renewed, and, and ready. What about you? Pretty good, pretty good. I uh, I know this is way past your bedtime. Uh, <laughs> as a senior, you like to be in bed right after dinner, so I, I, I appreciate you being up with me late. It, 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 listener, it is 8 o'clock, by the way. So <laughs> 8 p.m., yes. <laughs> so great. Yeah, it's been a, a good start to the year for the Aquisto household. And I was going to ask about your kids and 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 grandkids, and that's a great introduction to this episode's topic. How's it going being a grandpa? Well, I appreciate that. So uh, my eldest uh, is doing great. Um, we'll celebrate ten years of marriage this year uh, in August. Cannot believe that. Uh, it's just uh, phenomenal, and. Uh, She's uh, she's doing great. Uh, my son-in-law is doing great. Uh, my uh, 18-year-old is uh, in her second semester of college at Howard University. Uh, very, very excited uh, about that. She's a little bit cagey when it comes to grades. Uh, she assures me that everything's fine. So, you know, she reminds me that she's 18. Uh, and so I just have to take her, her word for it. Uh, <laughs> my son... Uh, the 16-year-old is just uh, killing it academically uh, and um, uh, with show choir. And then the grandbabies, uh, the stars. Uh, my uh, grandson, the one who made me a grandfather, will turn four in March. He is, uh, he's great. Uh, mm -hmm. Just uh, very, he's, he's, he's a very, very calm uh, child. Doesn't get too excited. And then uh, my granddaughter will be three in June. Um, she's a little bit more excitable, but the uh, funny thing is, uh, you know, they'll go to my son's, uh, show choir, uh, concerts and so on, which are not short and they'll sit there and just kind of watch and mm. they are not fidgety. They're not trying to run up and down the aisles. And so that's, uh, that's great. That's great. Uh, how's dad life for you? That's, that's great. Listen, uh, dad life for me is, is pretty good. My son is in his second year at university of Louisville and he takes a lot of pride in his academics and we couldn't be, we couldn't be happier about that. And uh, we had a great time at uh, the holidays and uh, a good long visit. And uh, so he's doing good. Nice. So daddy issues. We, we kind of alluded to it here, young grandparents. And as I mused on young grandparents, a, a big part of it is, is at some point somebody was a young parent now, you know, young, young grandparents, you were either a young parent yourself or mm -hmm. your son or daughter is, is a young parent, right? Kind of there are different paths to becoming a quote unquote young uh, grandparent. So you yep. are definitely, uh, you have a young vibe. You're definitely not uh, an old grandpa <laughs> like we all, you know, think of as old people. Yeah. I'll be 54 in March. 54. Okay. That's a young grandpa. How does it make you feel? Well, you know, it's it's interesting. I I guess my first response is I uh, never wanted to use that term, uh, grandpa, grandfather. I, uh, I had a discussion with my uh, my daughter initially when I found out that uh, she and her husband were pregnant, and I said I I, uh, I want to be Big G. Uh, I didn't want any any part of anything grand. And she did you say Big Chief? Big G. Big G. I, oh, Big G. Gotcha. Yes, Big G. And uh, she, she promptly vetoed that. No. And I said, I don't, I don't get to choose my own. No, no, you don't. I, I, at least not that one. And I said, okay. So I thought a little bit more. I said, well, how about G Paul? And she said, okay. You okay. Can be and so that's yeah. who I am. G Paul. You know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, was a grandmother very young. You know, to your earlier point, she got married right out of high school. And so she was a young mother. And then my mother, her eldest, uh, she had three daughters biologically, a son whom she adopted. And uh, my mother was married right out of high school. 
And so that made my grandmother a grandmother even younger than I am. She was a grandmother in her 40s. Mm. You know, when I look back on that, I, I think, okay, well, that's I'm actually older than she was, which is weird to think of. But I, I really don't think of myself. I mean, of course, times have changed. You know, they talk about you know, 50s, the new 30 or, or whatever. So I feel young. Thank God. I feel I feel great. And I've got energy uh, for for my uh, for my grandchildren, which is mm-hmm. uh, very important to me. Yeah. I was reading the average age of becoming a grandparent is now trending towards about 50. 50, yeah. My mother, do some quick math. My oldest brother was a young parent. He was 20. So mm-hmm. in 1981, my niece was born and my mother would have been 43. Mm-hmm. So very young. And yes. I remember I would have been 15. So I became an uncle. Either way, my mom, like you, she said, I'm not a grandma. That won't fit. So her name is Patty, and mm-hmm. she became uh, Pat Pat. Pat Pat. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, That's it was good. Pat Pat. And That's good. many people in my family still call her that, who grew up as her grandchildren. Mm-hmm. And it carried all the way through to older grandchildren. And uh, I think part of it is that that stigma of like, oh, I'm not I'm not old. Right. Um, so right. was that a was that a transition for you? How did that how that play out in terms of you thinking about? Well, here we go. I'm somebody's grandfather. Well, you know, it's it's interesting because you know, as I've shared, I was I was a teen dad. I, I became a dad just before I turned seventeen, and I didn't really think about being a a, a grandparent when I was young. Uh, and of course, you know, I threatened my daughter, and I said, "You can call me a hypocrite if you want, <laughs> but I'm not going to," you know. You're going to be married. You're not going to take the path uh, that, that I did. So I didn't really think about it initially. But as she uh, got older and got married and, and so on, um, I began to think about it. I, I actually could have uh, very easily been a grandfather in my in my uh, early 40s. Uh, just so happens that my daughter was a little bit older uh, when she got married. And then I think the average age of uh, motherhood at this point is 26 mm. uh, and she was older than that and so so I, I actually could have been a grandfather much uh, much younger so what are some of the challenges of being a, a young grandpa how do you feel about interacting with your grandchildren being a being a young guy part of it is you know I'm in I, I guess I would still call them my prime working years now you know I uh, lead fathers and families and uh, that is not an easy job uh, that's a pretty and it's a job I love. It's uh, yeah, I tell anyone it, it, it is the best job I've, I've ever had, uh, but it, it can be pretty uh, taxing. And then, you know, the, uh, the I serve on six boards of directors, uh, write a weekly column for the Indianapolis Reporter. And so, you know, my, my time is very valuable. And as you alluded to, you know, I'm, I'm somebody who likes to be in the bed early. And fortunately, uh, when the, uh, the grandkids come and spend the night, which is which is not infrequent, uh, I, yeah. they spend the night at least once uh, a month. That's helpful that their bedtime, you know, my bedtime is the same as theirs. So <laughs> put them down, I go to sleep. Uh, but uh, but I love hanging out uh, with them to watch uh, them uh, develop at uh, at uh, almost you know three and almost four. Uh, it's, it's pretty uh, pretty cool. So is there a is there a challenge for I think, and I think we've all seen it where maybe, let's say you're a young grandparent, grandfather like you, do you overhelp sometimes because you're either number one, able to help, or if you have a young son or daughter as a parent, maybe you feel like they need more help and maybe, uh, you know, kind of over involvement or kind of trying to run the show or take up that slack. Is that a thing? Have you ever experienced that? Uh, I so it is a thing. I have not personally experienced it. Uh, my daughter, so like I said, she she and her uh, her uh, husband, my son-in-law, will be celebrating ten years of marriage this year. My grandson, who's the older of the two, will only be four this year. So they uh, they had a quite a while to be married before they started having kids. And I made up in my mind uh, when they got married that I was not going to be you know that in-law. Uh, yeah. And so unless, unless something went very, very wrong, uh, you know, I was it's it's their life, their marriage. Um, I, I was not going to be um, overbearing in, in that way, even though I, I absolutely am a very, very proud uh, helicopter parent, both yeah. with my uh, 
eldest and with the two younger ones. In fact, I, I like to call myself, you know, for our military folks out there, uh, I like to call myself a Black Hawk parent. I wasn't a Black helicopter Hawk. parent. I'm a Black Hawk parent. <laughs> um, but I was not going to be, you know, the equivalent uh, sort of father in law. And, and so, no, I, I don't. And by the way, if, if I ever did uh, sort of slip into that, my, my daughter would not hesitate to, to uh, very, very nicely let me know. Hey, nothing wrong with a little helicopter parenting once in a while. <laughs> I mean, we all want to make sure that everyone is taken care of. And, you know, I imagine that's a thing. L let's talk more about it in terms of not just, I mean, I love hearing these stories, but maybe for the benefit of anyone, we want our show to be practical in terms of usability and things that people can use. If there are boundaries issues for someone like, like this kind of thing, where it's like over parenting as a young grandparent or, or the other extreme of like letting them take care of it because you're, you know, you're still trying to live your life or maybe you work still like you and still in your prime years. Um, those boundaries issues, you know, what are some things that, that people can do to get past that in their parenting relationships? Yeah, I think one, you know, certainly uh, communication is is crucial, uh, ensuring that uh, your children who are, you know, parents, younger uh, parents feel comfortable uh, in uh, having a conversation uh, with you if necessary. I think another thing is self-awareness. Uh, you know, I've I've had my time. I have, I've only had one more in, in the nest now, and uh, mm -hmm. he's a junior in high school. Uh, starting his second semester of junior year, um, I, I am uh, aware that I'm the grandparent, uh, not the grandparent. I've, I've got one more uh, to to raise, and then he's out. Uh, and so I, I'm mindful of that. Thirdly, I think again, just kind of the circumstances of of life. You, you know, it's it's funny. You know, uh, my daughter will not infrequently ask me what I'm doing on a Friday or Saturday night. I'm only saying I'm I'm a young unmarried man. What could I possibly, <laughs> in my mind, young? You know, yeah. Uh, what would I? What could I possibly have have uh, going on? It's it's uh, it's interesting. But of course, you know, I think she knows that that dad is, is going to say yes. But you know, communication, uh, self awareness, and uh, just making sure that uh, you uh, insert yourself into your grandchildren's lives, but but not be over overbearing. Yeah. You're listening to Daddy Issues. We'll be right back. And now, let's get back to Daddy Issues. In our world of blended families and different age levels and different, um, you know, all kinds of shapes and colors that families are today, you know, there are many times, I would imagine, you have grandchildren and your you still have one in the nest. So, so yes. he's going to be there in the same room, you know, and you're all like, well, I'm your father and I'm your grandfather, but I'm still not an old guy. And not mm -hmm. to keep harping on that, but it's like, uh, you know, as the old stereotype goes, when my, when my mom sits there and looks, oh, those are my grandchildren and yes. that's my children over there. We're all grown up and it's like, you know, it's kind of, we all fit like Russian nesting dolls. Right. <laughs> right. But, um, uh, but is there any kind of uh, awkwardness or, or strangeness that comes as a feeling of being in the same kind of, you know, raising them up in the same house as you and then you also got grandchildren? Before my uh, daughter, uh, the middle daughter, a uh, middle child went off to uh, college, of course, she was there along with my uh, son. And there, there are good uh, aunt and uncle. My daughter goes by TT, by the way, and my son goes by Uncle Jay. Okay, Thanks, Justin. Uh, uh, although I, I I do have to say that uh, of the two, uh, my son is the much more involved uh, than uh, the much more involved uh, uncle than my daughter is and aunt, and so he's he's a big kid, uh, literally and figuratively, very mm -hmm. very uh, playful. And so I don't I don't think there's any real uh, real uh, awkwardness. I'll, I'll tease him uh, every now and then, and and you know tell him my my grandkids are my favorite. But uh, he just kind of rolls rolls his eyes. Uh, he, he knows <laughs> I'm, I'm joking with him. Um, yeah. uh, if anything, you know, it's interesting. My eldest daughter sometimes uh, wants to be my little girl again, uh, which yeah. is interesting. She'll uh, lay her head on my, you know, shoulder or something like that, or she'll say, you, you know, well, remember, I'm still your daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, I was teasing her. She posted on Facebook. Like, well, I wished her a happy birthday on her birthday, and she said, "Thanks, uh, thanks, Dad. What am I getting?" 
And I, I uh, posted back, uh, I don't know, ask your husband. <laughs> you <know? laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. They never cease being your kids. Yeah, for sure. And at Christmas time, we had all of our family together, the multi-levels. So it's a wonderful time. At that point, we have my my niece, who I referred to earlier. She's she's such a, you know, at a certain point, we all become grownups. And yeah. she's an attorney. I think I said 45. She's probably 40. Let's say 43 this year. So, I mean, we're more like cousins than I am like her, you know, level up. That's right. what was created out of my mom being a young grandparent. Um, and those kind of differences in the quote unquote traditional, you know, age levels, those can work out great if there are good communication uh, habits, like you said, good boundaries set up and, um, uh, Hey, we didn't ask to be as hip and cool as we are. Look at us. We've got a young vibe. We've got right. young energy. And so there's nothing wrong with being a grandpa. Look at you. Yeah. You're wearing Under Armour gear. You're looking good. You're not, right. You don't have Werther's in your pocket. No, you know, it's, it's funny. Yeah, I, you know, we, we have all, all those stereotypes, you know, when we're growing up about grandparents, you know, uh, whether it's, you know, walking with a cane or having difficulty getting <laughs> up out of a seat, especially, especially if it's a couch, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, and, you know the, the groans and the aches and pains, and I, and I you know, certainly I do have uh, some of those. Part of that is, is you know, uh, a, a youth spent playing sports and so on. But yeah, in in, in my mind, at least, uh, I'm not. Uh, I don't feel 53. I mean, I remember being a teenager, and even in my you know early to mid 20s, uh, thinking about being 53, 54. You know, at the time, I would have thought, oh my god, I know, brave. And, and all that and now it's like yeah no i'm, I'm, I'm feeling you know yeah. pretty pretty good i, I uh, i'll as, as long as the good lord allows me to feel this way uh I'll, I'll take it yeah i agree i can't imagine what i thought a 57 year old person would look like but i i feel fine the way i am so let's talk a little bit this is jason aquisto larry smith here it's daddy issues a podcast from fathers and families center of indianapolis we're talking about being an, a young grandparent can you talk a little bit about your clientele the people that you work with the young men that you are equipping with fatherhood tools and and giving them ways to succeed as fathers how can this subject matter address them, uh, you know, directly? Yes, it's it's a wide range, and so uh, this is our thirty first year. We've served, you know, approximately twenty two thousand men uh, in the last uh, 30, 31 years. And uh, until about a decade ago, there was actually a, an age limit. It was sixteen till about twenty seven ish. Uh, and a decade ago, long before I got there, I've only been with the organization a little bit more than a year and a half now, um, the organization decided to, to do away with the age limit. So I joined in August of 2022. In my time, I, I know there uh, has been at least one gentleman in his 70s. Uh, and, uh, you know, so what is what is a father? I always like to say that I am not Maury Povich. You know, if you come to us and you say you're a dad, you're, you're a dad. Yeah. Uh, we, we do know, though, that we have grandfathers. We have, of course, stepdads, uh, uncles, brothers who are any, any male who is acting in the role of a father right. uh, is, is welcome uh, to, to come to fathers and families. Uh, we serve, you know, certainly a majority uh, African American. Uh, clientele, but um, it, we're not, uh, that's not a requirement by any means. Uh, and we actually, just today, we've had one of our largest cohorts ever, uh, about 37, 38 men in the class, nice. uh, which was unbelievable. Uh, uh, it's a great, great problem. And we're outgrowing our space, and it's a great problem to have. Uh, finally, we, we address what we call the four Ps. We want to help men become a better uh Person, parent, partner, provider. Person, what does it mean to be a man in the 21st uh, century? And so uh, one module that we do is maleness to manhood. What does it mean just to be a man? Secondly, the parent. What does it mean to be a father in the 21st century? Uh, mm -hmm. Most of our clients, like me, grew up in a home wherein their father was not present, uh, or at least not present most most of the time. It doesn't necessarily mean they're a bad father, just they didn't have a uh, a full-time role model. Although I, I will add, uh, there's a nuance here. There's there's a difference 
uh, between being not being in the home and not being present in your child's life. You can be present in your child's life and not be in the home. In fact, uh, I can tell myriad stories about men who were physically present in the home, but not but not emotionally available to their children. Great point. Um, yep. uh, thirdly, partner. We strongly emphasize the importance of having a good relationship with your children's mother, even if you're no longer intimately involved. And that's everything from simply getting along and how to talk to each other to dealing with issues around child support and, and all of that. Uh, and then the last P is provider. Uh, the average income of the men when they get to us is less than $9,000 a year, less than $9,000 mm -hmm. annually. Uh, the overwhelming majority are either unemployed or underemployed. And so they want to get to that provider, that last P, very, very quickly. But um, we understand, given uh, the demographics of the men we serve socioeconomically, that's not uh, frequently going to work out well. So we go through all these other classes for or modules for three weeks in our Strong Fathers program. Then we get to the provider party and we can connect them to an employer. We can uh, get them uh, certification in all the skilled trades or CDL or forklift driving. Yeah, so that's the real life application. Once they get to that fourth P, then you're ready to put things to work in terms of uh, uh, of applying the the principles and the underlying character building aspect into like okay so now now we go now we we live life we engage with these things that that we've equipped you with so how's up how's everything shaping up for uh, like you said you're about a year and a and a half a in yeah. the job is it everything you'd you'd hoped for or how's everything looking for 2024 yeah, it's definitely, of course, you know, in many ways, I didn't know quite what to expect, even though I'd been involved with the organization as a volunteer. I'd been on the strategic planning committee back in 2011, I want to say it was. Uh, but uh, this is my first time leading an organization, president and CEO. And, you know, you you, you talk to other folks that, you know, who are in that role, who have been in that role a while, uh, and I still do that certainly have uh, mentors who I talk with to help me sort of think, uh, uh, think through things. And then I've got a great staff uh, as, as well uh, that, uh, who, who really uh, can compensate, you know, for the areas in which I'm weak and, and so on. Uh, but in terms of um, expectations, I, I didn't know completely what to expect. I had some idea, uh, but long story short, it, it's, it's uh, like I said, it's the, the best job I've ever had, my favorite job, certainly the one at which I have worked artist um you know i keep thinking you know i'm responsible for people getting their paychecks every two weeks and that's mm. that's that's a daunting thought sometimes yeah, so right. i just want to make sure that i'm doing all i can and then obviously to serve uh the men we serve who in many cases are not at all you know certainly but in many cases are very vulnerable we have a high percentage of returning citizens and so we want to make sure that we help them reintegrate because uh, we, we also go to the penal institutions and mm. work with men who are 90 days or fewer from being released. And so a great deal of responsibility, but also a great deal of joy. That's such a big part of it. I'm glad you mentioned the part about going in for soon to be released inmates. Uh, that's one of the hardest transitions, I believe. You can attest for sure that you've seen men try to, you don't just jump back into the the world. Uh, and especially jump back into a family situation, I would imagine. You know, I was going to mention as we kind of circle back to the to the grandparent, you mentioned something that triggered my my mind because I grew up in a household without a a uh, for for most of my life without a father, but with a grandfather that was of uh, and he was of the of the the expected age. He was seventies, yeah. right? But I mean, it was such a I knew what it was. You were alluding to all the the uh, the men that you help, everyone who acts as a father. I would say that in so many ways, my grandfather, my mother's father, uh, salt of the earth, big father figure, big influencer, and 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 all those things. So I'm glad you mentioned that you serve at Fathers and Family Center, anyone who acts in that capacity. Yeah, absolutely. And similar to you, um, uh, my so my parents were divorced when I was very, very young. Uh, my father was not involved in my life uh, for the most part. And my grandfather, my uh, it turns out my grandmother's second husband, uh, he is the only man who I consider to be my grandfather, even though his blood doesn't run through my veins. Uh, he is the one who was there. Uh, 
Yeah. And Chester Rowan, uh, Vivian and Chester Rowan. I named my middle daughter after my grandmother, Vivian. So yeah. Vivian and Chester Rowan. Uh, but yeah, he, he was a very, very good role model for me. So I, I can definitely appreciate that. Yeah. And so, you know, if, if you if you talk to the people who deal with young people who have challenges, uh, may be um, involved on the wrong side of the law and so on, uh, and you ask them what is the key uh, to helping uh, these young men either steer clear of those challenges or to get them back. And it, it is the involvement uh, of an adult, typically a male adult, whether it's, you, you know, if the father is not there, a stepfather, a coach, uh, a minister, mm-hmm. uh, a neighbor, uh, Pastor Jeffrey Johnson of Eastern Star Church here, the largest African-American church in Indianapolis. I'm a member of that church. He talks about a, a neighbor of his who acted like a father uh, to yeah. him. And when he took his children places, he took Pastor uh, Johnson along. Of course, he wasn't a pastor then. Again, that would have, would have been weird. Uh, but Jeffrey. a young Jeffrey Johnson. He was a little Jeffrey. Yeah. <laughs> he, took, he took him along and, and just to hear him tell those stories. And so, yeah. yeah, to the extent that we can get men, irrespective of whether they are a blood relative, mm-hmm. uh, men of character, men of caring, who can get involved in the life of a child, certainly uh, female children as, as well. Sure. Uh, but but uh, to help uh, young men grow, in, uh, boys grow into young men, grow into older men. Yeah, that's such a big aspect of it. So again, as long as we're shouting out, uh, I want to say, you know, James Powell Brown, that's my grandfather, granddaddy. And he was every bit the granddaddy. And I don't think granddaddy, the name would fit with you because you're a, you're a G-Paul. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's right. G Paul yeah. for life. Yeah. So that's cool. So I think it's been great. You know, it's funny with my my daughter, uh, my my uh, eldest daughter uh, says that I am not the same man I was when she was a child. Uh, oh yeah. Either when it comes to my younger two or with the grandchildren, you know, but they they just get away with murder and I'm you know uh, guilty. I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll 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 cop to that charge but i i tell her it's really it's it's for two reasons one i was such a young father that i think in retrospect i was frequently trying to assert myself Mm -hmm. uh as as her dad not her not her big brother you know i am Mm -hmm. your father not your big brother uh whereas now uh even though i i don't always feel old uh like you know is is anybody bleeding no okay great do just do whatever you yeah (laughs) you're you're, you're doing I chalk that up to having a little more faith in them. Somebody yeah. might say, oh, you just don't want to go see about it. No, I think I have trust in them. I yes. just have more faith. That's what it is. Listen, I I think this has been a, a great conversation. I'm looking forward to our next one. Larry, I hope you have a great January. I hope it warms up here in uh, Indianapolis pretty soon. Let's hope uh, so. Otherwise, we'll see everyone next episode and uh, take care. Thank you, sir. Look forward to it. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Daddy Issues. Be sure to connect with us on social media. Feel free to email us, dads at the Daddy Issues Podcast.com. Daddy Issues is a podcast from the Fathers and Family Center of Indianapolis, Indiana. To learn more about the programs of Fathers and Family Center, visit fathersandfamilycenter.org.